What's going on guys, Vic BP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, the aim tracks are officially done. Today we're gonna be looking at Model 2, MAM Arcade, and I have the Wiimote light gun menu. So, I'll be honest, the aim track guns, I mean, it took me about a week just to configure everything. Um, you know, you got Techno Parrot, you got Model 2, you got a couple of PC games too. I don't know if I'm gonna touch into the PC games uh, today, but really it's just House of Dead 2 and 3. Um, I'm looking at some more shooting games, uh, but until then, at least for now, you know, at least I got the aim tracks to work. Um, again, these all need configurations. It's not just a simple plug and play, like I always say in, my, in all my videos, None of this stuff is plug and play. I assume that the aim tracks was plug and play, but apparently it's not. Especially to get it work with Model 2 uh, and the PC games and the Wii, it needs some work. MAM Arcade is a simple plug and play. You just have to kind of configure a couple of buttons. But other than that, everything else needs to do, you know, needs to do some work. Uh, right now I'm gonna load up uh, Eugene. I love the guy, he's a great guy. Uh, he keeps messaging me and stuff. So basically I fixed my um, whole configuration for joy to key so you could actually leave the aim tracks plugged in and start hyperspin so i'll do another video as far as like why that happens um i'll do that later on but again uh, i had originally set for a hyperspin menu for players one and two and now that we introduced the guns now it went to the joysticks players three and four so it was kind of a quick fix on joy to key um, but I have it done, buddy, so no worries. So basically right now, we do have hyper, uh, we have nothing launched right now, but I do have the aim track guns plugged in right now. So as you can see real quick, you can see like the mouse is moving. So as you can see like real quick, I do have the aim track plugged in, as you can see on the mouse. So now I will launch hyperspin. And I'm gonna start with the Model 2. And as you can see, we right now have Hyperspin launched and I'm gonna be able to use the joysticks to navigate. So we are A-OK, -okay, buddy, so we're all set there. I'm gonna launch up the Model 2 first um, because in all honesty, there's about five games on the Model 2. Um, the most common one that everybody does know is the House of the Dead. So the House of the Dead 1 is officially a Sega Model 2 game. I do have this wrong also on MAME, MAM Arcade but I think you should play it on the Model 2 only because it's, it's a little bit better. The, the feedback on it is better. So right now, the Model 2 is launching a program called the Mule Shooter. A lot of program configurations for this, but I have it all set to work. So I'm still using the arcade sticks for my coins and my start. And as you can see, we do have the crosshair up. My aim might be a little bit off because again, I do have the bar top in front of me, but the monitor is there. I'm also gonna show you real quick how to go into the configuration because as you can see, you kind of see like where my crosshair is, the actual shot is not perfectly inside the crosshair. Um, so basically, you know, for me, it's the reason is because I'm on a different screen. If I was using the actual bar top screen, that'd be great. I should do that, but I do need a display port to HDMI. Uh, that's the only thing I need, and I currently don't have that wire, and I do want to get these videos out, especially for Eugene. So, again, the big thing that even in real arcade cabinets, it is a big suggestion for you to recalibrate. You should always calibrate your guns to you personally. So, once you do that, keep focused on the main screen you want to do. Also keep that in mind, somebody messaged me and said, Hey Vic, can I put this to a 65 inch screen? Yes, you can. If you do though, you're going to have to recalibrate 100%. The screens are at different sizes. So I'm right now aiming, my bar top really was a 22 inch screen. My monitor right now is a 32 inch screen. So even with that, it's, it, it changes, stuff changes. On House of Dead, I am using the red button to reload. Uh, unfortunately, there is no off screen reload on this. The real game was off screen, um, but for this emulation, it's not. Uh, a couple of the Man Arcade ones will let you do off screen reload depending on the game. Um, so right now, I'm going to just bring in player two. So I'm going to add the coins to player two. I'm going to press start on player two. And as you can see, this is like classic. How said that? 
I wasn't a fan of it, I was actually terrified. We used to have, um, we used to have it at the job site, we used to have a house of dead, big cabinet. Uh, and I sold it because two of the guns, both of the guns didn't work. And basically when you were closing, you would hear like the attract mode on it, so there'd be like a phone call and little, like a girl's like, please help, they're coming, everybody's dying and it, it, it was scary. Try to think of that when you were closing the place. So again, House of Dead 1, as far as the Model 2, I believe that there's five games in total. And again, the Model 2, really cool emulation. It's even got like a Sonic versus, like a Sonic Street Fighter style game. We'll do that later on. Oh, I shot the gun. <laughs> but again, Model 2, House of Dead. I'm gonna escape out using again the arcade stick. So I'm pressing the exit button on the actual cabinet. And now, uh, let's see, the next one I want to do is Virtual Cop. So we have Virtual Cop 1 and 2. I'll launch the first one. Loading complete. And again, what's great is you can see launching so far is flawless, in and out, escape is easy and such. So I'm going to press start on player 1. I don't think this utilizes a reload button. I'll take a look when we get in. But for right now, it does. I do have to reload, okay, cool. Now again, as far as like how to get into configurations, I'll show you real quick, it's not that bad. Some games are different, but the key is, is, is always the same, it's F2. F2 enters the service menu, but as far as navigating the service menu, it kind of changes within the game. Sometimes you have to press the actual gun trigger. Oh, I lost my phone there. Oh, almost got me. Sometimes you have to use the actual like gun trigger to navigate the menu. You might have to press the coin button to enter in or you press the player one start to enter in. But again, it's always a good idea to kind of recalibrate. So as you can see, this game right now, this is pretty smooth right now. My shot is perfect. And I'm digging it. So again, virtual cop, I'll bring in player two. And the reason, honestly, I keep doing this player one to player two, that's the big thing I want to exaggerate is that if you're doing just one player, aim tracks might be an easy plug and play because it recognizes player one as the mouse. So if you are planning to do just like one player, that's easy. But setting up two players, that's where stuff gets kind of technical. You can't technically have two mice. You know, it kind of spazzes out. It thinks player two is player one. You'll have both guns working, but it's the same crosshair. So just keep that in mind. Again, that's why I keep going back and forth from player one to player two. And again, utilizing the button three on the reload. I lost my crosshair. Excuse the noise, I got landscapers here. But so far, 100% the um, Model 2 emulation and the guns are perfect. I'm gonna exit out so I don't bore you guys. So Virtual Cop is definitely awesome. Virtual Cop 2, we'll do that real quick. Load. And again, just Eugene's PC that, you know, he's got, the hardware he's got, it's a beast. We're going in and out. I'm just waiting for like my screen to come back because it's kind of changing resolutions. But I am seeing from my, my Elgato. Oh, I played, I pressed player one. Player one start. There we go. I'm look, looking at the Elgato and the Elgato picks up the um, image faster than my actual monitor. But so far so good, nothing crazy. Again, same game, you shoot, and then the red button to reload. So again, you can even go up, you know, depending on how you want to hold the gun, but you do need two hands for this game, as you can see, oh. <laughs> I hate that. Shooting innocent lives. These kind of games, like this is cool because you can't just hold down the trigger, you're actually using your trigger finger. So this is like awesome. And I believe at the end of this game, at the end of each round, it gives you like a um, accuracy reading. You know, meaning if you're, you know, just randomly shooting. But again, so far, oh, get him, get him. Yes, good. Again, the M Model 2, this is the Sega Model 2 running the mule shooter. I'm gonna go into player two real quick. What in player two, so as you can see, player two, like on the model two, has like this red and blue to it. 
you can kind of see, see my player one is still, you know, it's aiming up because I have it down. It's on the ground. But again, it's all about like how you want to figure out your uh, your position on holding it, but you can still like to fire it if you want. This is kind of a weird way to shoot a gun, but there you guys have it. That's Virtua Cop 2. We're gonna bring it back. And again, the Model 2 does shooting games and actual arcade games. And within this whole list, there are uh, five, I believe it's five shooting games. I'm just, I'm just waiting for my uh, monitor to come back to life. Let's see, there was one more, there it is. Let's see. So I'm gonna let that kind of launch up. And I'm gonna, after this game, kind of untangle myself. <laughs> uh, but again, utilizing the arcade sticks, pressing player one start. I got my cluster here. So think about like this game with behind enemy lines. Um, for some reason, there's a missile thing that you're able to shoot, but current emulation, it just doesn't work. Um, so as you can see, this game is like, you could actually hold down the trigger. Uh, our little green is like the radar. Again, you could either, you know, actually physically trigger or just hold down. Come on, there you go. Cool, I'm gonna bring in player two, just for kicks. So as you can see, player two is the red crosshair, player one is the green. So just to show you real quick, we do have two player action on it. Just shake my hands. And I'm gonna real quick show you also just how to go into the configuration menu as far as the model two. Again, it is a good idea to kind of recalibrate. This is set really for Eugene, but again, depends on your height, depends on where the cabinet is and such, so just keep that in mind. Um, in all honesty, you, you do it, I mean, for the Model 2, you, you should do it for each game. You're only talking about five games, so it's not that drastic. And it's pretty quick, so, you know, most of my people, when, basically when they play it, they're like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna start playing House of the Dead. You know, right when you know that you're gonna start playing it, then you can do the calibration. It's not like you should, you don't have to get the bar top and go, oh, I gotta calibrate everything. Not really, you just kind of calibrate it right when you get to the game, it's very easy. My big thing is I do want to untangle myself, untangle myself a little bit. But while I get ready for that, I'm going to launch up the service menu in the Model 2. It's very simple. You literally press the F2 button, that's the service button. And then, as you can see, it says test is F1. So F1 is able to kind of navigate, as you can see. And then F2 is basically your enter or service button. So I'm going to go to gun calibration, I'm going to press F2. And now it wants you to go do gun 1. So again, for Eugene, I'm gonna hold gun two before it falls. For Eugene, I have basically a white sticker that just says one. So this is again coded for, for one. Um, if you put player two in without player one, this is recognized still as player two. So once you get player one, you kind of find out where your crosshair is. I lost myself. You really shouldn't hold both of them because as you can see, it was spazzing out a little bit. So I could go one and two. And then it says here, press gun two. So I'm gonna take gun two. I'm gonna go one and two. And then that's it. As you can see there, it says save changes. You do F2 to save the changes, and then go to F1 to exit. Once you press exit, it's gonna reboot, and now you're back into the system. So again, the gun calibration for the M2 Model 2, it's very easy. I'm gonna exit out. I believe that there was one more game. It was called Rail Chase, R Chase. Even this is one, Gunplay. Gunplay was actually a pretty cool game. I was playing it before. Uh, Rail Chase was an alright game. Um, I'll run. I'll run both real quick. Why not? So again, one button press, one button only. While that loads up, I really do want to actually untangle uh, myself. So we are semi-untangled. I'm gonna re-untangle myself in a few. Basically, I'm gonna add some credit. I'm gonna do player one for now. This basically the cross doesn't show up until the train starts coming at you. 
don't know why, but this is how it is. See, there's my crosshair. I'm gonna have to make sure that I'm in good position. And this is a game that, as you can see, you can just pull the trigger down. And again, that's kind of what sticks with recoil guns. I mean, this gun, this game right here, I wouldn't even remember this as recoil, but if you're holding down recoil, it's just, you know, the solenoid is just fired and it's just staying open. And literally, it's a little motor, so you're gonna burn that motor out right now. You know, that solenoid isn't going, it's not doing that, it's just, it's just, it's just one little dirt and that's it. So you have to keep that in mind whenever you're doing the solenoid one. Readjust my arm, there we go. I'll bring in player two, just for kick. Oh, I didn't insert more credits. There we go. So we got Mary on the screen, where is she at? There she is, so red and blue. Like I said, every time, even like in the real arcade, you kind of just gotta readjust and figure out where your crosshair is. So Mary and Flint double teaming on this. Again, a game like this where you just kind of hold down the trigger, it's fun still, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I would, you know, you could do this. If you had this, the actual um, recoil and you were doing this, it would feel cool. You would actually like it, it would actually be a real gun. But again, you have to do this. But for this one, I'm just gonna hold this down. Yeah, I can bring it to the hips if you want. See, once I start like moving my arms, you don't like lose it totally, but you know, you just gotta kind of refocus and find out where you are. All right, that's real chase. I'm gonna launch the last one, which was that blood, uh, Blade Runner. Oh, Gun Blade, I'm sorry, it's called Gun Blade. So we're gonna launch that. And then again, I am going to unplug my uh, aim tracks and just kind of untangle myself a little bit. So again, adding coin. And again, I didn't, I didn't tangle myself up like now. It's just, I've been playing with this all day. So I haven't untangled myself. So as you can see, I should probably do a recalibration on this. Cause you can see my crosshair is on the far left. It's just like, it's not even right. Right. Yeah, my crosshair is not even right on this. So I'm gonna press F2. And again, same thing, F1. I'm gonna go into, let's see, where is it? Aim set. Okay, push player one trigger to start. Set up gun. So let's see, set in the gun. Press test button to exit. Set up player one gun. Just aim for the four corners. So one, two, three, four. So let me see, I believe I'm set. So I'm gonna press F1 or F2 to exit. Yep, F2 to exit. And then F2 there. So now we're gonna try one more time. Yeah, see that? Look at that now. So now my yellow, you can see the crosshair now, is inside the red. That's good. I always leave the, cur the crosshair on. You are basically, right now there's two crosshairs. You have your yellow and your red. For me personally, it's a good thing that I do like seeing that. Because I was able to identify like, whoa, you know, my shots aren't even here, what's happening. So, as you can see now, with the calibration, that yellow crosshair is in the exact correct spot. It does save at the end of the game, it, it really does, but, you know, you might as well take the extra, what, 30 seconds? Just to recalibrate. Now, I didn't calibrate Gun 2, though. So, I'll bring in Gun 2, as this is like a game that isn't a um, reload gun. And right now, I can't even find my player too. So you see that? So let's just do it real quick. We'll do the test menu. We'll do the aim set. I have to pull a player two trigger. So and it's just saying, it's not even asking for what corners. It's just saying aim for the corners. And again, I'm basically aiming on the corners using that red. That red crosshair couldn't be there. You wouldn't even know where you're aiming. So again, that's why I leave the crosshair. So now if I go back, I should be able to see, I'm gonna do just player two for now. And boom, there you go, you can see it. So my red is still a little bit off. I should recalibrate, but it's not like before. You saw I didn't even have a crosshair. Like, it wasn't even on the screen. 
But it's not too bad. You know, it, it could go over half an inch. But again, using the blue crosshair to recognize it. I'm gonna go into player one start. And now, let's just see. Yep, I have both guns now, so you can see yellow, player one, blue, player two. So again, got two player action on this, so you can just hold down the trigger. Audio's coming out of the Elgato, that's good. Wow, this guy just avoiding all the shots. <laughs> And again, that's what's great about these aim tracks. The, the slightest like little movement, I'm hitting it. I don't know if you can see that, I'll do it on my left hand. Like the literally the slightest little move, it's, it's, it's getting every, every little movement I'm getting of it. So again, the aim track so far is just, they're amazing. I wouldn't, I don't mind the wire, I'm telling you. I wouldn't even bother going wireless. I haven't personally tested the main flash bar, so I can't talk too much about it. But right now, the way this is, it's an old brainer. Let me exit out. And I'm basically just gonna re-record. I'm gonna start a new record while I basically untangle myself. Okay guys, cool. So I am untangled. Uh, again, don't get it twisted. I literally sit on a little stool and you know, I shoot the gun, put it down, shoot the gun, so it doesn't always get tangled. Don't get it twisted. We're gonna exit out. I want to discuss right now MAM Arcade, MAME Arcade. So the big thing to understand with MAM and MAME, how I have mine set up, you have regular MAME. Uh, there's actually two versions of it. I have a MAME ROM wheel, and then I have an old ROM wheel. So using that wheel, let me go through real quick, this way it's in a visual. So this wheel, this wheel, and this wheel is running one, emulator called MAME, MAM64, but my shooting one is running a whole different executable of MAME. So basically I have two MAME emulators. I have one original MAME and then one called MAME Shooter. Um, so it's very important. Again, you will find the shooting games inside of these you know, two wheels, but if you are aiming to play the shooting games, I highly suggest you go into this wheel, which is the gun game. The gun games, this wheel, and the way MAM is set up, and this is how in-depth hyperspin gets. Um, basically, my original MAM, when I had it set up, like, with the guns, it would only recognize player one. It wouldn't recognize player two. That was because the guns were actually, like, the second player was actually set to player five, four, set to player four. So, you know, you gotta think, Arcade sticks are players one and two. If you wanted to do four player MAM, you have to use the Xbox controller. So now the Xbox controllers are usually three and four, which would then make the guns really players five and six if you had all of it on. So that's the big thing you have to understand is that the computer, the PC, there's no way to set up, hey, my Zinmo player one is always player one. It doesn't work that way. It, it just doesn't. So if you were gonna do one player, man shooter like let's say you wanted to do i don't know uh, operation wolf one player you could launch it in the original man window and you're fine but if you want to do two player action that second gun is not going to work it's a whole thing again remember you're asking the computer to do a ton of stuff it just doesn't it's not going to work so just keep that in mind please so my big thing is basically saying to eugene i have if you are playing the gun games play it within the gun games wheel Basically what I did in this MAM section, in this BAM emulator, this specific one in this wheel, there's no joysticks at all. It just recognizes the guns and it recognizes the coin and the start and the exit. That is it. it doesn't recognize anything else. So you can't play Street Fighter on this wheel. It's not even on this wheel. So just keep that in mind. It is really technically two separate MAM arcade emulators I have on my stuff. Uh, that's also the same thing for Dolphin. Dolphin, when we're talking about the Wiimotes later on, the actual Wii shooting games, I have a whole separate Dolphin that launches. This way you don't have to go into settings and change settings. Only because Dolphin, the settings on that to set that up is a pain in the ass. So I have it set up where it's just a whole different kind of rundown. You will find these shooting games in the original Man Wheel. You will find the shooting games in the original Wii Wheel. But I highly suggest that if you are planning to play a shooting game, launch it in the correct wheel. There's no other easier way to say it. 
So right now we are in the man shooter wheel. I believe there's about 70 games in total. And you got a couple of good ones. You got like Aliens, you got Area 51, a lot of stuff. The only ones I couldn't find was unfortunately the um, Big Buck Hunter. I don't think that was Running Man Arcade. I'm gonna do a little more research to find that. But for right now, we'll launch, for example, Area 51. Loading complete. So again, Mam Arcade was so easily to set up. I mean, if you were just gonna do Mam Arcade games, this, this 70 game wheel, and you just wanted to use Aimtrike's plug and play, they're easy to set up. But if you are planning to do four player arcade sticks and Aimtrike, you need some configuration to do. So again, I am still utilizing the buttons, the arcade buttons, and now, in all honesty, you don't have to configure any shots on this because it's really reading that crosshair. So you don't have to really configure or calibrate the gun. You could still calibrate the gun. So this game, as you can see, I'm able to do a off-screen reload, which is an amazing feeling, to be honest. That's how like the real arcade was. So I lost my cross I'm sorry. So I utilize it like talking. <laughs> and as you can see, that shot, you can see a little bit to the left of the crosshair. And again, you could definitely still calibrate the gun. I might do two player on this. Oh, bad zombie. I didn't like this mission at all. This game, I remember growing up, it was definitely a pain in the butt. Gonna get some more coins. Again, I got player two now, so player two is red, player one is blue. And again, off screen reload. I just wish like top did that. You knew like you were a badass in the arcade when you got your whole phone in your hand. So you would pay a dollar. <laughs> Just to have this experience. I was bad at this game. I was horrible at this game. It's, it's even worse doing the reload. Because <laughs> again, I'm trying to look for my crosshairs. And every time I do a reload, I kind of lose the crosshairs. There's so much going on on the screen. I feel like I lost the crosshairs. <laughs> I'm gonna now just go to one player, just to show you, because some people might be like, oh man, when you are reloading, you know, it's just awful and the game runs awful. No, it's just, I can't even see what's going on. <laughs> One more time, I'll hit one more point. Come on. And again, I'll even show you how to go into the gun calibration menu on this. And as you can see, my player one, it's a little bit off. Again, should always kind of calibrate. You shouldn't really have to, but as you can see, it's just a hair off to the left. So I believe it's set to F1 or F2. It's actually set to F2. And let's see. See, to select test, use gun, to run test. So I'm pressing the gun trigger. And then I could press start. Let's see, to select test. Oh, to select press test, I have to press F1, F2. F2 to select. Oops. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm looking dumb. Okay, gun test, to run test, press right start. So that's actually player two start. There we go. So, aim each gun at the crosshair below. So, hold trigger until flashing stops. Cool, player one is done. And again, that's what's great about MAM Arcade. Yeah, talk about the, the the actual like sensitivity on it. <laughs> For tracking screen to return to menu, press left start. So that's player one start. So I'm gonna press F2 to exit out of this. And now we should be good to go. I'm gonna do it again. 
And now we're gonna see basically how is my crosshair and where's the fire on this. So as you can see with that recalibration, if I reload, look at right where the shot is, it's dead in the middle. So again, as you can see, had to recalibrate, you just have to. I tend to hold the the USB wire, I notice. See, also you learn how the game is. I feel like when I shoot my my aim track up, I lose the crosshair. If I do kind of like a light tap up, reload. So you see the real arcade one, right? We can just throw it up in the air. See, so reload, and then I'm back. See, that was the issue I was having. I kept losing the crosshair. And again, I'm not planning to edit this. I'm not planning to fight this. This is how I am. Oh, we do one more. Again, Area 51 brings back a lot of memories. I had this too at the job site. It's a very difficult game. I feel like you would waste like three dollars just on this first like level, and this is like beginner. <laughs> also, another thing I did notice definitely to keep in mind um, when you are using these aim tracks, you need to be in a not a well lit room, but I did notice that if you play in the dark, it runs a little bit different. I'm gonna escape out. So again, one button at. Man Arcade is like just so fast to exit out, there's no need to like even worry about it. Uh, I was playing some Duck Hunt, uh, really cool. I was thinking about removing these, the player choice ones are just horrible. Meaning like they cut the screen, the screen didn't have, it's just awful. This does have House of the Dead 1, I wouldn't really launch this one, I'd rather use the M2, but I'll just leave it there. Um, we could do like for example Lethal Enforcers. Loading complete. And again, you might get that where the emulation is not correct. That's just always on a couple of games. So right now I'm going to use the buttons to bring in some coins and let's just see how our aim is on this. Is there a reload button? So off screen reload on this gun, on this game. Again, I just, I, I have a tendency to just hold the the USB wire, man. Ooh, oh, she looked like a secretary. <laughs> but then again, she had a gun her hand. <laughs> so again, two player action. If you wanted to do two player I highly suggest you have to run a whole separate MAM emulator just to make sure it runs good. Player one dead, let's go into player two. Uh oh. Who do I shoot count? Oh, he had a gun in his hand. <laughs> oh, I'm just... <laughs> Let me try to bring in two players on this. Okay, player two is red, player one is blue. I keep forgetting that, I don't know why. Player two is dead. Still one more. Whew. So again, a good 80 games on MAM Arcade, and I tested each game. Uh, only like one or two of them didn't run 
Operation Wolf 1 wouldn't run, um, so I just removed it entirely from the list because it's not worth having it on the list. I'm gonna aim for this belt. Does anything happen with this belt? <laughs> it just falls off the wall. So you guys have it, that's lethal and force, so I'm gonna exit out. But it does me do what I did before in the other one. And that is real quick run some time crisis one. Loading complete. Time crisis was just such a iconic game, like you you had to play time crisis. So we'll go into story again. And again, normally man arcade you don't have to calibrate, but that all depends on how this starts. This is utilizing the red button to peek out. So button three, I'm peeking out. So I could line up. Now, if you remember on the Wiimote, that, uh, that video I did with the Wiimote, I was having an issue hitting the corners. I only could like get to a certain point, but with these aim tracks, I don't have that issue at all. I don't know how the main flash bar is. I'm not gonna judge it because I don't have it. So this is a game, again, you're gonna to need to use both hands. Oh, I just kinda of like check the edges if I did want to do a re, uh, off shot reload. I remember, if you go back to the Wiimote one, I couldn't shoot that guy on the left. There was definitely a part where I was like, I couldn't proceed because my crosshair wouldn't even go there. Cool, I'm gonna bring in player two. I'll let player one kind of get shot at. Oh, actually no, I'm sorry. Time Crisis 1 is a one player game. It is only a one player. You can't do two players on this. Sorry, my mistake. I believe Time Crisis 2 is a two-player. And again, this is a, this like, if you had recoil guns on this game, because in real life, this game had recoil guns. That was like a big deal. Um, if you had recoil guns for this game, this would be cool. So if you had a dedicated Time Crisis cabinet, I would probably get the recoil guns. But again, after, you know, a couple months, solenoids might die out. So that's Time Crisis 1, let's exit it out. Uh, let's do one more. Oh, I was playing Duck Hunt. And I loved Duck Hunt when I was a kid with the NES. I had the zapper and everything. But damn, this game is difficult. <laughs> I don't know why, but shooting the duck in this, and I don't, it's not the crosshair, and you can't calibrate. There's no calibrating on this. It's just, every time I take the shot, the duck just goes off. <laughs> like, I, I missed the shot completely. There's one. There's two, okay, wow. You witnessed it, that never happened. <laughs> when I was doing the, when I was testing the game, I was like, I can't shoot this dog. Oh, I missed it, missed it. All right, got one. Again, this game is like, you have to be so precise on that. Again, classic though, I mean, if you, I'm, I'm gonna be third, and you're talking like the NES, having the zapper, you didn't need a bar, like it would just read off of the CRT TV, that was nuts. One, oh. I'm proud of myself on the first round, I got both. But this is definitely, you could get pretty competitive with this game. Damn it. And I said, this game was like, you had to get it precisely on it. If you didn't get that duck, oh, forget it, you missed it. And again, as you can see, like the crosshair, that's what I love about this, it's just, it's so clean. Oh, I lost. <laughs> Still one more. Can't go wrong with duck hunt. Imagine playing this on like a 65 inch. <laughs> I mean, trying like four year old me, like just playing with the Zappa. Come on. I'm gonna like replay this in like Premiere and I'll be like, did I really miss that shot? Oh, I got that one. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I'm missing though. I'm, I'm here like thinking like maybe like. My, maybe my, just, I'm just, I'm, my, I'm off on this, but I'm actually missing that duck. I'm missing it. Don't move. That's one. Darn. <laughs> I 
I lost, I lost, I lost, I lost. There you guys have it, that's Duck Hunt. We'll probably do one more Mam Arcade game. Um, I did want to actually show off, oh, Carnival. That was a great game. Carnival? Only reason I thought about this was that uh, in the arcade one-up forums, like people are going nuts for this game. Pretty cool game, can't lie. Now, real quick, um, it's just a message to Eugene, and he notices it. He sees me on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, I sent him a picture playing. I think it was Time Crisis on full screen, but then I sent him a picture of Carnival not full screen. It was on Aspect. It was like a four by three, and he asked me like, "Hey, Vic, why isn't that on full screen?" Basically, it's going back to what I was talking about with the man emulator. The first one I had full screen, the shooter I, I didn't have it set up correctly, nor would it recognize my gun. Um, I'm running now MAM.222 uh, for just the gun. The original MAM, um, I actually use MAM UI FX. It's just easier on that. So my original MAM stuff works on that. But for the gun, I downloaded a whole new thing of MAM and then I fixed up basically the video. So again, utilizing the arcade sticks on player one. Again, I have like a little white thing. I used to have it here. I just put it here for now, and we could now get ready with Carnival. I just have to have it holding the USB wire. It makes me feel like I'm like locked in. <laughs> Not that I'm afraid to step on it. And this, we are utilizing the third button to reload. Yes, you do need to reload on this. See, once I like move, I gotta readjust where my crosshair is. And again, it's not it's not an issue of the aim tracks are bad. No, it's just the bar top, I can literally see why it was kind of spazzed out. The bar top is, you know, at an angle down below, and I'm looking at the monitor, which is pretty far away, meaning the height difference on it. And again, this does do two player on it, so you could definitely do tag team, double team on it. Nobody driving my car. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely do a separate video for the Wiimotes and the PC games. Again, as of right now, the only PC games really is House of the Dead 2 and 3. With House of the Dead 3, there is something that you have to do before you play. It's just, it doesn't for some reason recognize any joysticks or joystick key commands, but it's nothing drastic, it's nothing too crazy. So just for kicks, I'm gonna bring in player two. Just so you can see player two on it. And again, utilizing the third button on the reload. And you can't hold down the trigger on this. <laughs> I have a feeling that even if you were double teaming and like unlimited shots, you would still die in this. <laughs> Could also be how fast you, you do it. Some people might be like pin, uh, pinball. They might be paintball players, and they'll be able to take that double shot, but unfortunately the trigger is not big enough for you to click two fingers, unless you modify it. <laughs> but there you guys have it, that is Carnival. Again, man arcade, man emulation with the gun. I only put games on the wheel that will 100% walk. So definitely 100%, you don't have to worry about anything like that. And there you guys have it. I'm gonna shoot now the um, Wiimotes and the PC games.